Next up is interdependence. So this topic is just about how uh, different animals and plants rely on each other to survive. So first thing we need to know is that all animals are in competition to survive. So they compete for food and water um, with any animal that lives in the same habitat. They compete for mates within their own species. Uh, they might compete for things even like shelter from bad weathers. So an example is lions compete with each other for territory and mates. The strongest lion would have shelter from the bad weather, be able to breed and therefore get to pass on their genes. Plants compete as well. So plants are competing for light for photosynthesis. So the taller trees are going to get more light. So the ones at the bottom aren't going to be able to photosynthesize so they won't survive. Um, they compete for water and minerals for making protein. They're also competing for space as well because they need space to grow, but you can only have one plant in one place. So they compete over that. So an example of this is that in spring, all the plants on the ground start to bloom first before the trees grow. And it's because if they don't do it early, then they won't be able to get enough light to grow because the, seed, the uh, trees will take up all the sunlight. So, predator prey. Hopefully we're all happy knowing that uh, predators are animals that eat other animals and prey are animals that get eaten. Now, there is obviously a big link between the population of predators and preys. Um, so, a predator that doesn't have much food, well, there aren't going to be very many of them. And if there is lots of food... So lots of prey animals and there will be more predators because there's more food for them to survive on. So there is this cycle and it's um, really important because it controls uh, the population to make sure that we don't ever end up with too many of one type of animal. So an example of this is uh, the lemming, which you've probably heard of. Uh, they're small hamster-like animals and they live in the Arctic. And their population changes dramatically depending on how much food there is um, because lemmings reproduce really rapidly and if there's lots of food they reproduce like mad um, and if there isn't any then they don't. Now if the population gets too big there isn't enough food anymore and the female lemmings then slow down the rate at which they reproduce. Now uh, snowy owls hunt lemmings and when there are lots of baby lemmings, lots of prey, the owls are then able to successfully rear more of their own young. So the owl population goes up. But if the owl population goes up, the next year the lemming population goes down because they're being hunted by more owls. So when the lemming population goes down, there'll be less owls, so the owl population will go down. And it sort of follows in a little cycle. Um, we call it cyclic fl fluctuations, so it goes up and down in a cycle. And we can show it on a graph quite nicely. So, um, on average, the numbers stay the same, but they do go up and down. So, if we just look at the number of prey animals in an, in an area, so the green is the prey, so it goes um, up over time and then sharply decreases and then gradually goes up, then decreases, then goes up, then decreases. And it's just in this up-down pattern. Now, if we have a look at the number of predator animals, it does the same thing. It goes up then decreases, goes up, then decreases. So we've got this fluctuations going up and down and it's happening over and over. Now if I put both of them on the same graph, you can see that the rise and falls are just a little bit out of step. So whatever happens to the prey numbers, a little later happens to the predator numbers. And it's the same pattern, it's just slightly out of step. And it's because it's about how much food there is for the predator animals. If there's lots of uh, food available, there'll be more predators born. But once there's more predators, that food has to go you know, across more animals, so there becomes less of it, because they eat lots and lots of it, so the prey numbers drop. When the prey numbers drop, the predator numbers drop. So it just goes hand in hand. Right, the next little thing we have to talk about is um, the difference between parasitism and mutualism. So parasites feed on or in another living organism, which is called its host. And the important thing about parasitism is that the host suffers as a result of the relationship. So uh, fleas and tapeworms are examples of parasites. 
Mutualism, on the other hand, is um, where one animal might feed on or around the other, but both organisms benefit. So an example of this is pollination. So um, bees go to uh, flowers to get their nectar, and at the same time they spread pollen from flower to flower. So the flowers benefit because they get pollinated, and the bees benefit because they get the nectar to make honey. Another really good example of this are cleaner species. So um, I've got you two pictures here. This one is a uh, shrimp, and they live in coral reefs. And what happens is bigger animals, or bigger fish like this one, will go into the coral reef. The shrimp then climb on them and eat all the things that have, you know, all the detritus that's on them, and they come out clean. So the shrimp get food, and the fish gets cleaned. Another example is um, ox peckers and buffalo. So you often see pictures of buffalo with these little birds hanging off them. Well, the birds keep them clean. They eat the fleas off them. They stop the flies from pestering them. Um, so the birds get a food source and the oxes, the buffalo, don't get uh, pestered by annoying animals. Um, and an example for the higher paper that you need to know is uh, nitrogen-fixing bacteria live on plant roots. So um, they fix, they take the nitrogen and, uh, from the air and then the plants can feed, use that nitrogen from the soil, but they both benefit from that relationship. So it's called mutualism when they both benefit. Okay, so that's it for independence. Remember, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask when you see me.